So we are going to talk about the nematodes. So specifically, we are going to focus on the life cycle of the nematodes. The life cycle. So we are going to consider eight um, major components parasites that are under the nematodes. Okay, so these parasites, you can easily remember them using this mnemonic, which is the EP pulse DT. So PT has DT. So here, these are nematodes. This means the interlobius vermicularis the t it is ritula ritulis then for h means the hookworm and there are two types of the hookworm there is um nectar i mean canus and also encyclostoma duodenea there's also the a which is the Ascalis lumbricoid. Then S, it is the strongyloids, strongyloids. D stand for the dranquiculus. Then for T stand for trichinella. So now these are grouped for the purpose. The E T between them, okay. The ET, then as okay, and the DT. These are grouped for the purpose. Okay, this can help you to remember them easily and not to confuse them. So ET, ET, these um two um parasites, they are completely intestinal parasites. This means that they do not involve any tissue stage, okay? So they are completely intestinal. So completely intestinal. What specific intestine? It, is, in, in, it inhabits the large intestine, intestines, large intestines. So these two, they become an adult in the large intestine. That's why they become an adult and that's why they cause infections from. They do not involve any tissue stage. So what it means not to involve any tissue stage, it means that they do not migrate to any tissue stage like bloodstream, the liver, the lungs or the heart. So when it comes to has, has means H4 hookworm. There are two types of hookworm. So what is special about this has? So what we need to remember that all these parasites, they become adults, adults in the small intestine. Okay, small intestine. This is for the large, this is for the small intestine. But its life cycle, it involves going to the other tissues like the blood stream, the liver, and also the lungs. Also, um, what you need to know about this has there is these two parasites, the strongloids and the hookworms. These two parasites can enter the body through penetration, penetration of the bare skin bare skin okay so this one and these two k 
can enter the skin through ingestion okay through ingestion so so this is what is special about these two okay they enter the skin through ingestion i mean through penetration and for for the penetration for it to penetrate it uses the lava the lava three so both two they use the lava three so meaning the lava three which is the filali filali form it has to penetrate the skin okay then the one that requires ingestion such as the intel um Entalobias and also um, trichuria, trichuria this. It needs for it to enter to infect. It needs the ingestion. Now, what is ingested? Is it also the larva? No, but this requires the embryonated eggs. This. So the one that requires ingestion, ingestion requires the, the ingestion of the embryo netted eggs. So knowing these, it won't confuse you like mixing them. So the next one here, Drancularis. This Drancularis, these two, there are the tissue nematodes, tissue nematodes, nematodes, nematodes. So what does it mean? It means that they infect the tissues other than the intestines. For example, when we talk about the drancularis, it infects the skin. Basically, the the lower just the the, 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 the foot okay. yeah and then for the trachinella it infects the muscle it in it inhabit it inhabit the muscle so these are the tissues they are not the intestines that's why so Grouping them in this way, it can help you to remember. Okay, we started with the ET has DT, so ET has DT, so ET there are completely intestinal nematodes, meaning they do not eat light circle, do not need to go to the other tissue for it to become mature and cause the infection after ingested. It only travels to the small intestine and become mature in the what in the large intestine. In the large intestine, that's where it causes the infection. The next we have the has. Has we have got the um the strong loids, we have the hookworm, ascalis, and the strong loids. So for the these two the um hookworm and the strongloids they cause the infection by penetration so whatever penetrates whatever part when the parasite penetrate the skin it uses the lava three which is the effective lava which is the flare form then there is the ascalis lumbricoid which can be enter the body through ingestion so ingestion of what of contaminated um food or water that's how so when it, whatever enters the, the the body through ingestion it has to be contaminated with the, the egg so this you see the eggs okay so here we add dt DT, we said it is the tissue nematoid, meaning it causes infections in tissues. Okay? It does involve the intestinal stage as it is growing. 
but it migrates to tissues to cause infections such as for the in the skin, the intrachinella, it is the muscle. So let's just talk about the general, another general thing that you have to know here. Okay. Remember, your focus is you are going to do the life cycle together, all of them, in an easy way that will make you to remember, not to confuse them. Let's write LT has DT. Remember, we say that this is um, the intestine completely, which if uh, which causes infection in the large intestine. Okay, so in the large intestine here, it doesn't involve any tissue stage. So what you need to know about the nematodes is since both of them, since all of them, they pass through the intestines, pass intestines. This means that all of these are capable of causing or are capable of um, causing the following symptoms to be seen, such as the abdominal pain, abdominal pain, okay? Vomiting, nausea, nausea, loss of appetite, of appetite. So, simply because they are able to pass through the intestines. So, all of these are capable of causing these symptoms. So, Whenever you're putting the clinical manifestation, don't leave out this because these are the general symptoms that this shows. But these, they have got the specific things, uh, the specific symptom that can, um, that can cause the clinician to identify that this is the interlobius, this is the ascalis, this is the wickworm, and then we are going to discuss them, okay? Then, also what you need to remember is, since we talked about that, there are also those that involve the tissue stage. So what are those tissue stages for it to become mature? The tissue stage can be the liver, the lungs. Okay, so meaning any of these, you are going to see which one involves the tissue and uh, the liver and which one involves the lungs. So any nematode that involves the, 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 the liver, it can cause the hepato biliary, 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 okay, hepato biliary. When it goes to the lung, what does this go? It, it causes it cause pneumonia, 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 okay? Pneumonia and also wheezing, 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 cough, okay, and also fever. Why fever? Because when it is in the uh, in the bloodstream, I left out the bloodstream here, blood stream. So these are the the symptoms that can be seen. So, whatever nematode, if it passes the intestine, these are the symptoms. If it passes these tissues, these are the symptoms, okay? But for the intestine, we need to know that all the nematodes, they pass through the intestine. Hence, they cause these symptoms to be fussy, the clinical features. Then, what about these two? This, it also goes to the, it passes also, so meaning also it can cause these symptoms. Also, this one can cause the symptoms, but these, they have got the specific um, infection that can co it can cause, that can differentiate from the other. 
the nematodes. So let's just now talk about um, the life cycle. How can we remember the life cycle of each of these? So remember, we have ET has C C. Yeah. Okay. So I said ET. Okay. These are completely intestinal. They do not involve the tissue stage in its life cycle as it is developing. So they cause the infections in the large intestine. Okay, in the large intestine. So how is the life cycle of these two? So it starts with it, the ingestion of the embryonated egg okay both it involved the ingestion of the embryonated egg so egg okay eggs remember the eggs are embryonated okay then they are ingested in the after leaching the intestine which is the small intestine okay small intestine Hatch, okay, it hatch. Hatches the egg hatches to where to a lava, okay, to a lava. Okay, this is the lava. Then the lava migrates to the large intestine. Okay, this is the large intestine. So this is the life cycle of these two. It follows the same path. But there's somewhere they be, where they become different. Where you're going to see. So the large intestine here, this is the large intestine. Here when it reaches the large intestine, it becomes mature into an adult. Adult. Adult what? Entalobius. Adult what? Trachelius. Okay. So this is an adult. Now, here, at an adult stage, you need to, to, to listen very carefully here. At an adult stage, one for entalobius. For entalobius. After the female and the male mates, okay? After the male and the female mates, this is for entalobias. The female migrates to the lectum, lectum, okay? To the lectum. Here to the lectum, this is the female. The female. To the lectum, they the female lay eggs there. They lay eggs. Okay, they lay eggs. These eggs, they stick to the anolecto. Ano, lecto, lecto. These eggs, after it has laid them, they stick to the anolecto. This is for the interlobius. After they stick, you know what it causes? It causes the itching of the anolecto. Itching. Itching. Because these eggs immediately are released, they become infected and cause, they stick to the anolecto. And they cause it itching. As it, as it is itching, a person can get the eggs using the fingernail, finger nail. The eggs can be stick in the finger. And again, a patient using the, the hands, the finger, can touch the, 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 the blankets, okay, blankets. As the, the person is touching the blanket is displaying the eggs. Okay, the eggs also to clothes, clothes displaying the eggs there. 
a person can when a person puts fingers in the mouth that person can be infect himself or herself again okay then after the infected meaning the life circle also begins again for the interlob interlobius for female here the eggs does not only cause the anolecto but it also causes the vaginal itching vaginal itching also in females itching yes vaginal itching so this is for the endolobius so i have seen here this is what differentiates the interlopias from others. It causes the what anolepto itching, okay? And also in female, the vaginal itching. Since it passes the intestines, this means that it causes the intestinal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, and also loss of appetite and nausea. Now, when it comes to Trichulia. Here, for the trichulia, when it reaches the large intestine, it doesn't go to the lectum and lay the egg there. But it lays the egg within the large intestine for the trichulia. After laying the eggs, okay, for the trichulia, it doesn't need to go to the lectum, but it lays the egg there in the large intestine. After the layering of the eggs in the large intestine, what happens? These eggs can cause damage, damage to the colony colonies cause damage okay this damage can result into the hemolytic sorry hemorrhage emma emo rage colitis colitis why because this damage injured it can cause the migration of the leukocytes to the colon hence it causes colitis so just there the trachulia lays the eggs it doesn't need to go to the lectum so he this is what can be seen when the trachulia is ingested the other thing that can be seen here it is the okay lectano lectano prolapse prolapse okay so these two, there are clinical features, clinical manifestation of the trachulia trachinalis. So these two are the symptoms that differentiate the trachulia from the others. So here in the colon, it releases eggs. Okay eggs eggs these eggs so these eggs can be passed to the environment through stool through stool 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 then 
there the eggs can contaminate vegetables 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 so a person can get the trichuria, the, tr uh, the trichuria through eating their undercooked vegetables or the vegetables that are not well washed, properly washed. And also soil, the soil, eating soil, mostly it is common in children. Children, they like eat soil can cause the ingestion of these eggs. And remember, the ingestion of these eggs, it has to be fertilized, embryonated. That's how we, uh, you can get these um, uh, parasites. So remember, for the interlo uh, interlobius, interlobius, you, a person can get the interlobius through itching. The person can get the eggs through the fingernails and reinfect himself or herself. And also the same eggs can be released through the stool. Okay? And after this through the stool, it follows the same as the trachea the vegetables and also the soil and after ingestion these two can cause infection so for also for interlobius it can also gotten through aerosols it can be airborne airborne a person can be this can get this through inhalation. So now, what is the, the diagnosis now of this? Let's consider the diagnosis. The diagnosis, let's start with the enter lobius vermicularis. How can the interlobius Funicularis be diagnosed. One, it is by using the the transparent transparent adhesive adhesive tape. Using the transparent adhesive tape. What is seen? Here, when we use the adhesive tape, it is the eggs or sometimes the adult worm. Adult worm. Okay. How is it being treated? Treatment. We can use Thailande Amor Ate. And also the albendazo. Albendazo. Bendazo. Okay. So this can be given two weeks. Then after two weeks, also a person should start. Course. Why? This is because um, interlo um, interlobius vermicularis it can uh, stay on surface surface for about um, three weeks. It can stay there. So since remember, I said that. Uh, when anal lecture, the anal lecture is itching, okay? A person can spray the eggs on blankets, blankets, 
So if those eggs are spread on blankets, it can stay up to three weeks. So meaning there is a possibility that that person can again get the egg and be infect himself or herself again. So as for that, the medication has to be given two weeks. Then after the person completes the course, it has also he has to start the course again. And it is adv advisable also the just the entire people who lives in that house to be on course because this can be possible that since it can stay on clothes for three weeks it, there is a possibility that even those people allowed the patient can have this interlobius. What of the the treatment can use the albendazole. Au bendazole. And um the bendazole. 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 Yeah, that's what we can use as the has. Let's first start with the Ascalis lumbricoid. Because these two, we are going to consider them together because they have a similar life cycle since they both use the skin to penetrate. So Ascalis, this lumbricoid. Blue glycoid. This is the intestinal parasite, but it involves the tissue stage. Okay, but what you need to remember about us is that it is different with the the ET, where we said this. They cause infection in the large intestine. But this one is for the small intestine. All of them. So now, when we talk about Ascalis lumbricoid, it is through ingestion. What is ingested? It is the egg. What type of the egg? The embryonated. Embryonated egg. Okay. Since it passes the intestine, it means that it causes the those general symptoms such as the abdominal pain, vomiting, nausea, and also diarrhea. So now let's start with the life cycle here. The life cycle. Life cycle. Okay. It starts with the egg. Eggs ingesting them. Immediately the egg are ingested, they hatch into larva three. And we know this larva three it is the effective larva that has the capacity the capability of penetrating the mucosa, the skin. So this larva when it reaches the intestine it penetrates this uh, the, the, the mucosa of the small intestine okay penetrates penetrates after penetrating where does it go it uses the the portal vein portal vein to migrate to the liver liver okay remember as this life um, parasite is becoming mature as it is migrating to each tissue or organ it causes the damage of those of which those can be part of the clinical features that can help a physician to know that this is this type of a parasite after going to the liver 
it goes into the lungs. After going to the lungs, it enters the alveoli. Okay, the alveoli. The lungs is specifically the alveoli. Alveoli. Then to the alveoli, it goes to the trachea. After going to the trachea, then it esophagus, esophagus, esophagus. Remember this movement. It is the pro. It is the process of the its maturation. So as it is moving, it is getting mature. Then after esophagus, it is swallowed into the intestine. Then now intestine. Now in the intestine, that's where it become now mature adults. Adults. Mature adults. There, the female and the male mates and the female release eggs. They release eggs. They lay eggs there. They eggs. After laying the eggs, those e e the eggs can cause the abdominal pain. Okay, the abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting, all those effects. Then these eggs can be passed into stool. Stool. Then into stool through stool to the soil. Okay, the soil. Then the soil, these eggs can infect the vegetables, vegetables, and also the soil itself. It is infected. It has the eggs. So, ingesting one of these can start the life cycle again. So now, How is it diagnosed? How is it diagnosed? Remember, there's something I left about um, the trichuria. Okay, let me just take you back. Trichuria, trichuria, trichuria. I talked about the lectano prolapse as one of the clinical manifestation. It also involves there decently 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 as one of its clinical manifestation it involves this decently now let us go to the the what's the the clinical features of since it goes to the liver the clinical feature it can include the hepato hepato b yali because this is the only nematode that goes to the liver after the intestine it goes to the liver lungs so it can cause the hepato b yali then pneumonia pneumonia since it goes to the lungs wheezing Wheezing, coughing, since it goes to the lungs. In the intestine, it causes diarrhea. Diarrhea, okay. Diarrhea, abdominal pain, vomiting, and also nausea. What is the the laboratory diagnosis? Let's consider the laboratory diagnosis. Okay. So laboratory diagnosis. Laboratory. Laboratory. Laboratory diagnosis. 
diagnosis it is um stoop sample okay so in the stool sample the eggs the lab technician should look for the eggs in the stool sample what of the treatments treatments okay so the treatment it also involve albendazole and um meo bendazole okay let us now go to hookworm and also strong loids hookworm so hook worm and uh, strange loids so there are two types of hookworms there is the nectar americanas okay and the ancyclostoma zoodnel okay zoodnel so this this strong large and also the hookworms they involve the penetration of the skin pene penetration of the skin involve the penetration of the skin okay so now what is the lava that penetrate the skin it is lava 3 so they both involve lava 3 the lava 3 penetrate the skin okay so now let us consider the life cycle infection starts with for both okay okay both lava 3 which is the filari form penetrate the skin okay penetrate the skin the bare skin bare skin bare bare skin after penetration it goes in, it goes in the blood stream okay blood stream after the blood stream remember don't forget that this is it involves the tissue stage but it becomes an adult in the small intestine so blood stream after blood stream where does it go it goes to the heart heart after going to the heart where does it go it goes to the lungs 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 specifically the alveoli the alveoli then to the alveoli it goes up to the trachea trachea okay then esophagus or sofa just like you can see here it's like this as it have the similar life cycle but the only difference is that it, this one it involves ingestion after ingestion it goes to the small intestine after the small intestine it goes to the liver now after the liver it goes to the the lungs this is for ascalis lumbricoid but this one since it uses the skin it has to go to the blood the blood carries it to the heart then to the lungs then to the trachea or esophagus then after going to the esophagus it is swallowed back to the small intestine intestine there in the small intestine that's where now it becomes mature becomes mature into an adult here 
That's where now the difference starts. When ma it matures into an adult, the strong loids, let's start with the strong loids. The female, this is for the strong loids. So this is strong loids. The female and the male, they mate. Okay? After mating, the female penetrated the mucosa of the small intestine. So this is the, let's say this is the mucosa of the small intestine. It penetrates and lays the eggs here. The female. After laying the eggs, these eggs, they hatch into the larva, within the mucosa, into the larva. Okay? The same larva becomes infective into larva 3. Listen. This larva 3 within the mucosa can cause the auto-infection. Auto-infection. What is this auto-infection? Meaning, this larva 3 can again start the life cycle. It goes, penetrates the mucosa, goes to the liver, goes to the lungs, goes to the trachea, esophagus, and comes again. So, others, the released, the ineffective larva then are released. So, the, the change of it becoming infective, it depends with it, the conditions. Is it the condition conducible or not? So he remember, after the, the, the egg has been laid, it become, it hatches into larva 3. This larva 3 can cause auto-infection, where it starts there. Start to penetrate the mucosa, goes to the lungs, trachea, and the esophagus. Then, larva 2 is released in the stool. In the stool. This larva 2, what is the name? It's the rabid, rabided form. The rabided form, larva. This larva, when it is in the soil, in the soil, it also depends with the condition. Is the condition conducible or not? So it can change into larva 3. This lava 3, what does it do? This lava 3, it is the infective stage, meaning it can penetrate again if, the, it, 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 if it becomes in contact with the bare skin and it starts the same life cycle. And it starts the same life cycle, this lava 3. Or if it is not contacting any bare skin, it can. Mature into adult. Adult. It can mature into adult. So for it to mature into adult, the environment, the condition must be conducive for us for it, such as temperature, moisture, and oxygen. So after becoming into an adult, it can again produce the eggs outside the environment. After producing the eggs, the eggs can come again and become the larva 3. And this larva 3 also can, when it comes in contact with a person, what does it do? It can cause the penetration. So this is the strong one. The strong light can cause the auto infection after penet after releasing the eggs in the mucosa. 
the lava tray is out of the mucosa and it can start the cycle causing the infection again or the labigid form come out of the stool to the soil when it goes to the soil it can change to lava 3 which is the infecting stage the lava 3 to when it meets the bare skin to infect or into an adult let's go now to the uh, hookworm so same the hookworm lava 3 the skin enters penetrates the skin the bloodstream heart the lungs it also goes to the also um, the trachea same then the esophagus esophagus after the esophagus the small intestine for the hookworms it is direct when it lays the eggs laying the eggs these eggs they do not become they do not hatch into the larva no that's where the difference is but for the strongoid it does so these eggs can be passed into the stool stool into the stool so these when the eggs is in the soil in soil one it can become lava one lava two then lava three then when the lava three comes into contact with bare skin it does infect so this one it is direct it doesn't cause auto infection but for the strongoids it causes the auto infection and it has it can have two life cycles the direct one and the indirect one just like you have seen from the, the explanation the life cycle now what is the clinical manifestation of this his the pneumonia pneumonia wheezing wheezing cough abdominal pain diarrhea vomiting and also nausea okay nausea and also the auto infections auto auto infection for strong lights for strong lights so the penetration of the the female worm into the mucosa it can cause severe abdominal pain severe abdominal pain so what is the diagnosis okay the diagnosis of the two they are different one we start for the hookworm 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 what is released are the eggs so these are the same eggs that a laboratory personnel can look for in this two so two sample looking for eggs but for the strong loids strong strong loids it is not the eggs it is the lava two which is the rabid form labid form labid form yeah so the lava so how is the treatment so for the strong loids the most effective um, treatment is giving the alva mexin mexin alva mexin alva mexin alva mexin yeah alva mexin then for the for the strong loids the alva mexin then for the hookworm it is melbendazole now melbendazole 
so, benda so. Okay. Let us now go to the, the last two. The last two. Okay. Last two, which is the talked about ZC draw Q the cuculus the cuculus okay and the tra chinella okay so let's start with the drunculus okay the drunculus these two they involve the intestinal stage, but they cause infections in the tissues. They are tissue nematodes. Nematodes. Tissue nematodes, drunculus. So these drunculus can be can cause infection after so for drunculus a person can become infected after ingesting ingesting the cluster Crustacean containing the lava, the lava for drunculus. After the ingestion here, when they is in the crustacean uh, here, it releases the lava here, the lava, the lava. Then the lava, when it reaches the intestine intestine which is specifically the small intestine intestine the lava penetrates the penetrates the submucosa submucosa after it penetrates the submucosa it becomes an adults and adults okay after becoming an adult it leaves the abdominal abdo abdominal and goes to the tissue okay to the tissue which tissue specifically is the skin the skin it goes to the skin so it starts with the ingestion of the crustacean the crustacean it has the lava when the lava uh, reaches the intestine it penetrates the mucosa of the intestine to the abdominal cavity there in the abdominal cavity it becomes an adult after becoming an adult now it leaves the abdominal cavity into to the, the tissue which is the skin there to the skin that's where it causes infection infection such as the blister blister you can see the blister blisters the blisters where exactly the lower leg the lower leg says the blisters so these blisters symptoms the symptoms or clinical features just there the appearance of the blisters okay the appearance of the blisters a person can be feeling the burning session the burning the hotness of the 
the, the blisters around it and the blisters look red okay around the blisters the lead appearance so that's how it can be diagnosed so this can be diagnosed by just seeing the blisters and also the the round appearance around the blisters so also the doctor can diagnose this just by seeing the same drunculus on blister 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 just the drunculus appears so the treatment is just removing the blister blister i mean just removing the drunculus drunculus since it appears on the blister Drunculus, just moving the drunculus. So a person who has this parasite would want to relieve himself by putting the leg in water. As that person is putting the leg in water, the drunculus, which is there, can produces eggs which changes into lava so when those eggs the lava goes into the water it goes into the crusta, crustacean which is the glue star crustacean where when a person injected this can have the lava from the trunculus. So the last one, it is the trichinella. The trichinella. The trechnella. Tre. Trechnella. So, try che. Try che. Trichinella, Trichinella, Spinalis, Spinalis. So this Trichinella Spinalis, a person can get infection after eating. After eating, under cooked, under cooked meat okay under cooked meat so the undercooked meat contains the cyst the cyst the cyst okay the cyst the calcified cyst which um in in inhabits the skeletal muscle skeletal muscle of the animals okay so when a person eats the undercooked meat so a person can get Okay, so a person can get the trichinellosis after eating the under cooked meat. Okay, so let's say under cooked meat, the person has ingested, he gets the eggs. Okay, the eggs. 
Then when the X reaches the intestine, intestine, it hatches, hatches into lava. Okay, lava into the lava. So a person can get um, tracheosis after ingesting the the lava from uh, the undercooked meat. Okay, immediately the lava is ingested. It in the intestine. It differentiated immediately, differentiated into an adult, an adult. Then the male, female, okay, mates to form eggs, okay, eggs. Then these eggs, they also hatch immediately after arching into the lava okay into the lava then the lava it penetrates okay it penetrates the intestine intestine and it is deposited deposited Zitted to the muscle, to the muscle. This is the skeletal muscle, that's why it is being deposited. There in the skeletal muscle, it form a capsule, okay, a capsule. After forming the capsule, this capsule is calcified, calcified. When it is being calcified, it forms a cyst. A cyst. It forms a cyst. This cyst, it is the one that causes the muscle pain. Muscle pain. Okay causes the muscle pain. And also the spasm. Spasm. Yeah. So these are the symptoms. So what we need to remember is it become calcified, calcified because it can only stay in a striated, striated, striated muscle. This means that it can't survive, survive in smooth muscle and also the cardiac muscles, the cardiac, the cardiac muscle, it can't survive. So the way the way this can be diagnosed is through history, history taken, history taken by knowing the last meal, the last meal, knowing the, the last meal that one took, okay? Then the treatment, it involves the Steroids, steroids, this is required for the, because of the inflammatory responses and also melbendazole, melbendazole to remove the worm. This is what I prepared for the nematodes, so if you like the video, just um, subscribe share the video and also comments down below 
so that you can be receiving the this video each week thank you so much